Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm still... <laughs> I just got out of freaking bed again. I got up early and I got through this, what I'm going to talk about. And then I was like, I'm going to turn that so the sun's not so bright in the camera. I went back to dang bed. I said, dang. Uh, I better go get the duck so I can quack and swear when they want to, huh? I don't have it. It's over there. If I need it, I get it. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I kind of worked on this and was thinking about all this this morning early and then had some coffee with my wife and, well, I mean, I was having coffee and she was getting ready to leave and go to work. So, uh, I had coffee with her, but she didn't really have coffee with me. It was... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway I was thinking about having coffee with her but uh, too bad she had to go but uh, anyway i um, going to pray today and let's get let's ask God to be here and let's talk about some stuff Heavenly Father Lord we just thank you for all we have and all that we are and everything that you've made us and given us Lord where we're at right now in our lives and we just try to make the best of what we got. We're sitting here right now, wherever we're at in our life. And Lord, let's look, at our, look around and what's at our fingertips, what's in our control, what's in our grasp, within our reach. And um, help us, Lord, to use everything wisely and to the best possible advantage that we can use it towards for ourselves and for our loved ones and uh, for you, Lord. And uh, um Help us, Lord, to be able to to just think simply and think clearly and and know what's the truth and what's not the truth right now in this world that we're living in. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to be here upon us, and we ask that you would uh, um, please bless us, Lord, with some knowledge and some wisdom. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. All right. I Man, I, I just kind of like this. This is just like... Fly by the seat of my pants. No pressure. None. I don't have to worry about people liking me on Sunday morning. Oh, no. Man, if I'm not good, they're not going to leave a check. <laughs> or they're going to go down to the next Jesus taco stand on next Sunday morning and buy tacos there. <laughs> Sorry. That's what it seems like. I need Jesus tacos this morning and this church suck. Let's go down to the other taco stand next Sunday and have Jesus tacos there. <laughs> uh, anybody been there, done that? <laughs> These Jesus tacos suck here. I heard they had some good God guacamole down there. I'm gonna get <laughs> some, some Holy Spirit burritos. <laughs> maybe this, Maybe the guacamole and the burritos are better down there than they are here. <laughs> I'm sorry, just so uh, this is just homemade whatever you want to call this. This is like a <laughs> just a scrambled omelet. <laughs> just what I'm <laughs> It's what it feels like. Just throwing whatever open the refrigerator, whatever's in there, and that'll be okay to throw in the omelet. Let's just do it. <laughs> so uh alright. I should probably be a little bit serious about this, right? All right, I'm I'm going to be here in a second. Give me a second. All right, I, I just felt led. Man, there's two scriptures this morning. It was about 3 o'clock that I just really, um, <clears throat> I just really wrote down and I really wanted to read. And it's Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth. So, um, that's to me, that's the seven years of tribulation. And every time I've done any research or listened to anybody that seems to really kind of know what they're doing, as far as the word is concerned, that's what Jesus is saving us for. Or saving us from. 
because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth. So, um, thank you, Lord, for rapturing us, harpazo, harpazoing us. I heard, man, I heard from a good authority um, that the word rapture is in the Bible, but it's in the old Hebrew Bible. So they used the word rapture in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, and then they used the harpazo. And then for whatever, for whatever reason, when it started going into the, the, the versions of the Bible that we know now, it, it you know, uh, the snatching away or uh, all, all the different other terms came into being. So anyway, let's keep going. I don't want to get into that. Let's go to Revelation 4.1. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, not a trumpet, but like a trumpet, speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. So this is talking about, you know, Jesus sharing with us all the stuff that's getting ready to happen. That's what the book, the book of Revelation is, is, is Jesus showed everybody what's going to happen. And that's what it's, I mean, that's what the book of Revelation is called, right? And this is about Jesus. Let me flip back over to my, the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he showed us, he showed, he gave us what's, who he was down here. You know, this is, this is about the whole thing from the Old Testament, New Testament, and this is what's getting ready to go down. So that's that's what's, what's what we have to look forward to. That's what's coming next. Sure looks like it to me. But anyway, so let's, um, I'm going to go over here to Psalm 117. Psalm 117, verse 19 through 20. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the, relig the righteous shall enter. So, you know, these three verses, it's, um, you know, those are the gates that we're getting ready to go into, right? That's where we're at. So, um, the world today is telling us so many things that are really just 180 degrees contrary to that, right? I mean, good grief. They're telling us how to speak, what to say, what not to say, how to say it, what words you can use, what words you can't use. I mean, just a few years ago, all this stuff meant the opposite. Am I not the only one that noticing that? Everything that they're saying now 180 degrees out from where it was just a few years ago. I, 
I mean, I mean, there is just, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, what is a woman for crying out loud? I mean, we're just getting bombarded with this crap nonstop. That's that's just one little thing that everything, everything that they're doing, that they, the world, right? I mean, is it, just telling us how to think. They they're telling us to think like them. I refuse to think like them. I'm sick and tired of it. Um, it's it's like driving down the interstate in a standard transmission car and just shoving the clutch in at 70 miles an hour and putting it in first, you know, putting it in reverse, putting the put the transmission in reverse and then just popping the clutch. I mean, that's how my brain feels. <laughs> You know, if you guys can imagine going down the interstate, 70 miles, 80 miles an hour, pushing the clutch in, throwing your your car or your Porsche or, or your Toyota Tundra with a standard transmission in it in reverse and just popping the clutch and just letting the just everything grind. That's how it feels to me. It's like stupid. I would never do that, ever. Crazy. And... and they're doing it with everything, every subject that you can imagine, every single, there's nothing that's, let's just cruise at 70 or 80 miles an hour, nice and smooth and six gear, you know, and just everything's good. There's nothing like that anymore. Whereas just a few years ago, it was normal, right? Everything's good, smooth sailing. I mean, they're telling us, even our country. Oh, you, our country is evil. Our country is racist. Our country is blah, blah, blah. It's like every single thing they're doing is bombarding us with opposite land. I mean, Like I said, just, just a few years ago, they're telling us crap now that doesn't mean what it used to mean. I'm going to go to, let's go to Isaiah. And it's uh, 520. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil for who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Um, so they're not just they're not just calling everything opposite. It, it's actually they're they're calling everything that's good evil. So not only do just they're twisting it. And flipping it 180 degrees opposite, it's it's now what was good is now evil, and and what was evil is now good. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? I mean, we're a lot of people. I mean, most of us here. Are, yeah, yeah, we know. Um. It, it used to be that our foundation, what everything meant, the perspective that we were coming from, the direction that we were going in, was from the Christian perspective, from the church perspective, from the Bible perspective. And, you know, fortunately, I mean, that was for years and 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 years that's where our country that's where the world not just our country the rest of the world too society 
was coming from, from a, a godly perspective, from a good perspective. I can't, you know, not always, but for the most part, in our culture, in our, in our country, in our country and our culture, that's the perspective that we come from. So this is like, these people are 180 degrees running backwards. From, and, and where they're coming from is not from the church or the Bible or a, a, a good perspective. It's from what's bad, what's contrary to God, what's evil, what's disgusting perspective. And they, and they just, they think it's okay and they're trying to force it on everybody else's throat. So that, you know, God said it'd be like this, right? Toward the end, it's just going to be everything flipped. So, um, I mean, those are common interpretation of everything. And if you were even, even, you know, in my generation, I mean, 40 years ago, even if you weren't a Christian, I was 18 years old. If you weren't a Christian, you still thought it was pretty bad and disgusting to do to little children what these monsters are wanting to do to little children these days. You still thought that it was absolutely horrendous to be talking about things to little innocent kids that they are just, they're desperate and dying. They're beating people up because we want your, we want to, we want to talk to your children. You know, it's like, wow. Whoa. Demonic. Everything's been twisted. Everything's been flipped. I mean, how do these younger generation, how do the younger people, how do the last, I don't know what, what number to start at, 30 somethings and below? When did this really get started? When did this really go off the rails? When did this really get off the hook? I don't know. Um, I mean, last 10 years where everything's, everybody's living in opposite land. Last five years, last three years, I don't know. But, you know, um, all of it, all of these, it's lies. All of these lies are just be, they're, they're just being presented as the truth. And what's amazing is that how many, how so many people are in on it. How so many people have turned from what used to be the way of interpreting things to this mind blowing. That's what, that's, I think that's, that's what a lot of people can't fathom just how many people are doing this. But at the same time, There's not that many of them. I don't know if that makes any sense. There's most, there's much more of us old schoolers out here on the, in the world than there are these people that have flipped everything backwards. And so why is that? I, well, I, I think it's because, um, a lot of people still have God living in them. A lot of people still have the Holy Spirit. A lot of people were born with, in God's image and like him. And because in our gut feeling or whatever, I mean, you, you know, this ain't right. This is something wrong here. Um, so, I mean, 
where we're at right now, we really, really need to hold on to that. If you still got that and you still have that discernment, you have that wisdom, you have that knowledge, and you really need to hang on to it, right? You need to guard it. Um, um, guard our minds, guard our hearts, guard our eyes, guard our ears, you know, what's coming in. Um, we really, we really do. And um, we're all getting bombarded constantly, constantly. It's everywhere with opposite land. And that's a good way to describe it, opposite land. It's flat out crazy stuff, opposite land. It's flat out evil. It's flat out demonic. And it's like we were talking about Ephesians 6 yesterday with it's being a battle between, not between flesh and blood, but what's demonic. And, and so, um, Again, that's a, that's a, a subject a lot of people just kind of, uh, it's kind of icky and kind of weird. I don't want to talk about it. And, and I think that's, that's where my friend I was talking about yesterday, that's where he's at. He's like, dude, this is just, I don't blame him. You know, I, I, I read a scripture today a friend on Facebook posted and it was about loving your neighbor as yourself and I'm like can you just or love your enemy not not like love your enemy right <laughs> here can you just here you you take my enemies and you love on them for me and just spare me of having to deal with it it's something that I gotta do I can't shove that off on anybody and the same thing about this, this acknowledging the spiritual battle, you know, a lot of people just shove that off and they don't want to acknowledge it and they don't want to deal with it. I, I know exactly where they come from. I don't want to have to love my enemy. Are you kidding me? That sucks. Something I really don't want to have to do, but hard thing to keep your head around and, and, and go and do. And so, you know, doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? And then, you know, I think it's, uh, um, a lot of people are having, you know, everybody's got their things about God that's really difficult for them to deal with, right? And so a lot of people, because it's so, so weird and so not real clear on, especially like Revelation and this evil spirit crap and demonic stuff and you know it's not real clear to understand and get your head around and so a lot of people don't want to deal with it and it's and so but we have to um um we're tempted with all kinds of this stuff constantly we're tempted into believing all kinds of this evil stuff i mean it's straight from hell and a lot of people are just just saying, i don't want to deal with it let's just Let's deal with it by not dealing with it and just skimming over and just, okay, don't say nothing. Understandable. Um, this stuff is not from God. It's not from the Bible. This stuff is not good for you eternally, your soul. I mean, it's just, it's horrible. It's, a, it's, to me, it's like poison. You, you just, poisoning yourself and um but people are being let off into it they're they're doing all kinds of these things they're even if you're it's like watching a bank robber and not doing anything about it i mean it's like you got a, you got a firearm on you you've you've got everything you need to they got their back towards you, turned toward you they're not even looking at you and you could walk up and 
conk them in the head and knock them out and, and you don't do anything. You just stand there and let them do it. Because you just don't, you don't want to deal with it. So, um, and a lot of people just stand over their cell phone and record it. <laughs> How many times have I seen that? Some, some cop on the ground wrestling some 350 pound dude that's trying to get his gun away from him and get 10 people standing around filming it. <clears throat> I mean, before this was like a small number of people pushing this crap and, and engaging in this stuff. And, and, but now it's on all on a massive scale. Everybody's running wild. Not everybody, but everyone's breaking the law. Everyone's breaking God's law. That's for sure. Um, it's, it's like the number of people that are pushing it, or it's in proportion to the and saying it's okay. It, it's in proportion to the same massive amount of people that are actually doing these things now. So it's just like wow, wow. So, um, it's all on a massive scale. Um, there's so many evil forces just trying to get our attention. To lead us off in the direction that they are saying that's okay. Um, we're leading off, leading us, trying to lead us off from what's the truth, what's right, what's godly, what's written in the Bible, how you should be. I mean, everywhere you look, everywhere you go, um, this, what's going on is trying to enter into our lives. I'm trying to control what you think, how you think, what you say, what you can't say. I mean, Control, control, control. It's mind control. And the physical control is what they're really, really after. That's next. How much, you, how much money is on your chip, you know, in your forehead or on your hand? Um, you know, these 10-minute cities, how far you can go from your house and back. The physical control is next. That's why they want our guns. <laughs> they got you in Canada. They got you in Australia. They got you in the UK. They got you in all these other countries where you don't have firearms anymore. And they can push a button and turn you off if they want. If you don't do what they're telling you to do, right? So it's about control, right? Um... I'll be honest, God wants to control you. He really does. God wants to control you. No, he doesn't. He wants you to control yourself. That's the difference between... God gives us this Bible and he gives us these instructions on how to control yourself. But these people... So is God wanting us, wanting to control us by giving us the instruction on how to control ourselves. That's why I said, yeah, God wants to control you. But he doesn't want to do it. He wants you to manage yourself. He wants you to that's manage yourself, manage your life, manage your behavior. He wants you to control. God's control of us wants us to control ourselves. <laughs> Does that make any sense at all? I don't know. But what's evil, they... they no, you're, you're a slave and in bondage and they control everything about you. I am thirsty this morning or this afternoon. Let me ask you, what percentage of everything that we're seeing and hearing today is related to being controlled by them 
Now, what percentage of what we're seeing? If, if I, I thought about doing this, sit, sit for an hour or, a, you know, what what's a good time sample? And just jot down everything that I see or hear. So I'm, I'm isolated and kind of protected. But I'm just like the average person, average American, average wherever in the United States. Can we sit down and, and log the percentage of, of the controlling crap that they want to push on you versus the non-controlling crap? Even, I don't know, I'm, I, man, I, from what I can just guess, I would say at least 70% of that is this evil narrative crap, this control stuff. Is it that high? It seems that high to me. But, um, again, uh, I'm blessed where I'm at. I can, I can really control what, what's coming through the door. Literally what's, what's, you know, coming through, I mean, the gates of my kingdom here, you know, my, my city, my walls, my gates, you know, my, um, the doors, the windows, you know, if you will, you know, I, I can control what's coming into my, my lives I'm, in my life. I can control the amount of that stuff and I can filter out this wicked from hell, not from church, not from the Bible, not from God stuff. You filter it out, say no. And we have not had TV service in seven years since we moved up here. And there was about a week that I think we'd been up here about two years and I was like, man, I really want to watch some football. And I really, you know, miss watching baseball or, you know, watching the weather channel or, you know, the history channel. I mean, that's stuff that we used to, you know, what I like. I, and then I, I, I got direct TV satellite dish for I think they give you like two weeks to decide whether you want this or not before you're in bondage <laughs> for two years and man I just sitting here watching this like I do not want this crap I almost said I'm gonna go get the duck All right, so I'm sitting here watching this and I go, I do not want this shit in my house. Oops, my timing was off, sorry. I don't want this shit in my house. <laughs> I don't want it in my house. And I called the guy and uh, um, I said, dude, we don't want this in our house. Um, took it out. Haven't missed it. We've got a big flat screen TV. We, we watch some YouTube. We got, we do have, um, Amazon and every once in a while they'll have a good old movie on and we got stacks of DVDs. Um, and so, yeah, we're not, we haven't watched TV in, in seven years. So, um, I've been keeping my guard up. I don't want that stuff in my house. Um, I've been protecting my family. I've been protecting my friends. I'm not, I'm not being the person that all of this, what's going on out there, I'm not, I don't even want to be the person where that stuff comes through me and then gets on them. I don't, I don't want to be the, the source of contamination. That's the way I look at it. It's contamination. 
being contaminated by evil crap. All right. I'm going to go over here. Let's go to Matthew. And um, let's go to chapter 24, verse 3 and 4. So, um, this is, this is, uh, Jesus talking about signs of the end times and the end of the age. So, uh, Matthew 24, three, now he has sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples, oh, he, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. I'm going to stop right there. It keeps going, but take heed that no one deceives you. So what this world, what's this world trying to do out there? Opposite land. Boys or girls, girls or boys, you know, boys. You can't get any more basic 180 degree flip. What's the truth to a lie than that? So Jesus says, take heed, take heed that no one deceives you how many people believe in this crap how many and then if you don't accept it then you're a bigot you're a homophobe you're something wrong with you if you if you won't let us deceive you then there's something wrong with you F that. Another lie. I mean, what, what's sickening is that throughout the entire world, they're, they're trying to do this on a massive scale. Jesus is telling us right here, take heed. Watch out. That's the first thing he talks about. Tell us when will these things be and what will be the, would be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. The, the, the apostle, I mean, the disciples are asking him. And the first thing that Jesus says to them is to take heed. Watch out. Make sure no one deceives you. So, I mean, and then the Bible goes on and on and on. It talks about it, how everything's going to be a big lie, right? It's all, so, I mean, Jesus told right, right, out of the block, right out of the blocks, man, don't get deceived. Make sure, make sure that no one deceives you. So, I mean, that tells me that, that deception is going to be high. I can honestly say this is the highest level of deception I've ever seen in my lifetime. And from all the history books and everything that I know, I wanted to be a history teacher when I was in high school. I loved history. And, and so, I mean, so I, I, it was the truth. It was actual facts that took place. Look at what they've done to the history. Trying to destroy it, rewrite it, tear it down. Deception is pretty high on the planet. What's the deception level now? Scale of one to a hundred. How much? How much deception are, are we dealing with every single day? Where, where is that needle? Seventy percent. Everything that's coming through that we're that's getting through to us is 
about 70% deception or more. I don't know. Take heed that no one deceives you. Jesus. Take heed that no one deceives you. Talking about the end times. Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. Take heed that no one deceives you. Boy, this ain't a sign. I don't know what it is. I mean, we, we have to have some kind, some kind of form of protection against us, right? I mean, there's got to be something that we can do that protects us. What can, what can we put up? What can we do? What can we do to protect ourselves? What, what you know, <laughs> they told us to wear masks for... <laughs> There, the time it was on that line when <laughs> sorry we gotta man we gotta be protected from all these lies we these false teachings that's what they are false teachings Paul talks about there are gonna be all these false teachers <laughs> false doctrines um, the Bible even calls them imitators of Christ. And, and it's, they're imitators of what used to be normal. They're imitators of what used to be based on the church, based on the Bible, based on Christianity, based on God's word. I mean, they're imitators. I mean, They're imitating, they're imitators of Christ. God calls them that too. Lots of false teachers, lots of imitators of Christ, lots of false, yeah. <clears throat> I see that just plain as day. False teachings. <sighs> so, the only way that we can really know what the truth is, is if we really know who God is for ourselves. All right. Developing our own personal relationship with God, maintaining our own personal relationship with relationship with God. Um I mean that's 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 the only defense. that I can see besides just not watching anything on, on any screen or not listening to anything ever again, just going out, live in the woods and don't listen to nothing. So to live here, to participate here, to watch things here, to listen to things here, to be with other people here, to filter all this. I mean, the only way, and, and this is just a logical, the only way I can see being able to function and do that and not get being let off is by having your own personal relationship with Jesus, with God, and, and maintaining that relationship, pursuing that relationship. I mean, wanting the relationship. Um, And, and when you do that, you're very, very quick uh, to notice things that are off, to, um, to notice if someone and what they're saying is just not quite right, to, to, or, or what you're listening to is just, it's off. I don't know how to else describe it. Just something not right about this. Um, what you're looking at is is just off, and, and and 
when you have that relationship with God and you, you're in that relationship with God and you're, I mean, just, you, you just, you just know you have that discernment. It's, it's like you're automatically getting some wisdom and discernment and some heads up. Um, even what you're doing, what I just did was off. Wasn't quite right. You're being convicted. There again, it's the Holy Spirit. It's rubbing off. You are who you hang out with, right? I said that before. You are who you hang out with. So if you're hanging out with God and you're hanging out with Jesus, you're hanging out with the Holy Spirit, then you and you're listening to godly things and you're listening watching godly people or you know, participating in godly things, events, it's gonna rub off on you. You are who you hang out with. You're going to know, is this evil or is this not? Is this godly or is this not? Um, and, and going back to the spiritual level stuff, you're going to like, what spirit is this? Is this the spirit of God or is this the spirit of evil? And a lot of people, again, don't want to talk about the spiritual, spiritual part because that's just a little bit uncomfortable for them. I understand. But that's what it is. It's a spiritual battle. Um, Satan masquerades as an angel of light. What's that? Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. For Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light, and and you don't know how many times I've I've seen evil do that. What's seen? What's evil? Just acting like it's just. I mean, the most pleasant and wonderful thing you ever could partake in. And and that that's just how slippery Satan is. When you when you know God, when you're experiencing God, He is a part of your life. He's a part of your routine. And and you're really really experiencing Him for yourself. Um, you're able to discern. Um. You're able to watch out. You're able to notice. Um, you'll be able to identify who, or divide by identify what, or you you will be able to identify somebody um, that it's about to deceive you, or or that's not about to, but it's already trying to. And, and so, but man, when, so that personal relationship that you have with God, that I, 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 I want God in my life all day, every day. I, I'm, and he's not, he's not in my life all day, every day, but I want, he's in my life all day, every day. It's not like he and I are talking. My wife's in my life right now, all day, every day. But am I chatting with her right now? Am I hanging out with her? Are we sitting together? No. Um, um, we're not, um, but she's in my life all day, every day, right? So is God. I look forward to her getting home five o'clock. She gets off and she'll say, need anything from the store, from the grocery store? Uh, yeah, I'm going to make this. Maybe I'm, I'm out of dill weed. Can you get me, pick me up some dill or you know, or I need sour cream or, you know, yeah, we could use a loaf of bread, you know, and, and then, you know, she comes home, but, you know, I encourage everybody to have this kind of a relationship with God, you know, even though, even though you're not with them every day, you're with them every day. They're with you. He's with you. You're with them. You're together, Right. All right. I mean, this is experiencing a very personal relationship with God. This is just like I'm having a very personal relationship with my wife. Jesus calls us the bride of Christ.
it really, really touches my heart that he wants to have that relationship with me. I think I'm going to change my nickname to Hairball. <laughs> I'm very limited in hairstyles. This is it right here. <laughs> well, this is a hairstyle too. That's why I'm kind of hanging on to it. It's like... That's all I got. <laughs> well, I have some more back here. <laughs> I got a bunch on here, but this is it, man. So I, I'm just, you know, I don't know about you, but when you realize that, that he wants to have this kind of personal relationship with you and who he is, Man, you talk about doing something to your heart. And and so, um, you know, I, I'll just be honest. I cannot find that many people down here on this earth that I want to have that kind of relationship with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do I want to have this kind of relationship with a lot of people I know? Hell no. Sorry. Oh, Hell no. <laughs> Do I want to have this kind of relationship with Jesus and with God and with the Holy Spirit? And then all the angels and all the other folks that are up there that... Heck yeah. That's who I want to hang out with. And I hope everybody wants to have a personal relationship with God. Be right with God. Be a part of the family of God. So when you have brothers and sisters in Christ, how great that can be. How important that is. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 10, verse 27. I made all these little tabs and I put an L for Luke. And I turn right to chapter 10, verse 27. Time <laughs> not to waste anybody's time. All right. Luke 10, 27. So this is Jesus talking. He, he's not saying this, but this is what he said. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So, why do you think he's telling us to do that? It's, it's, it's like the cornerstone of your whole world down here. He is mine. This is like the cornerstone of my entire life. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. I mean, even the Ten Commandments, number one, top ten list is, um, you shall put no other gods before me, I think is what it says, number one. So there's reason behind this, right? He's, he's trying to control you, but he's not. He is. He's trying to control you, but he's not. This is for your own good. It's for your own freedom. Your own... This, this is for you to... The cornerstone of you managing and taking care of the life that he gave you. All right. So I'm going to try and hurry it up here. Um, bottom line, we need a real, as real as you can get. We need a personal, as personal as you can get. We need an authentic, 
as authentic as you can get. We need an honest, as, as honest as you can get, relationship with God. We all, I think that we all need that. I think that we all want to have that kind of relationship. We're all, we all look for those type of relationships and that feeling that you get from those kind of relationships and every single thing else but him. You're looking for love in all the wrong places, right? Man, it's a good song to dance to if you're from Texas and uh, you get good leather sole boots on and sawdust on the floor. That's a real good song to dance to. And uh, I remember when I met my wife. And we went out to a club, Cowboys, in Arlington, Texas, and went dancing. Sorry. And I'm, I remembered I remember dancing with her to that song. She wasn't into me <laughs> as much as I was into her. But yeah, I've been looking for love in all the wrong places. But God, let me find her. Just like I found him. So, um, man, I didn't really want to go here. Just came up. I really need the Holy Spirit, I need, I need God and Jesus more than I've ever needed them. I've needed them my whole life, but I have never before ever been to the point where I am now, where I need them. Okay. And, and same way with my wife. So, um, I mean, it's by the Holy Spirit that we have this relationship with Jesus and with God. It's its how we have our communication with Jesus and with God. It's how we have our discernment from Jesus and from God. Um, Holy Spirit can lead you to the truth that's in the Bible, it's in the gospel. Holy Spirit will, he's, he's not can, he will lead you to what's the truth in the Bible, in the gospel. He will lead you to truth in Jesus Christ you know we all ask God for so many things in our life right miracles and healing and people to get saved and for loved ones to get saved and you know for material things for money for opportunities for doors to be opened for you name it man we got this whole list that we all go to to God and ask him for Right? How often do we ask him for, Lord, please give me godly wisdom. Give me your wisdom. Give, give me your discernment. Can you imagine what you can do with that? I'm going to go to Proverbs, Proverbs 4, 7. All right. Uh-oh, did I not mark that one? 
I was going to, and I didn't. All right, I got to flip. All right, Proverbs 4, 7. Proverbs 4, 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Got to have wisdom right here to deal with all this. Not just your everyday life to life, but you got to have wisdom right now on the spiritual level. Got to have that. Got to have some wisdom right now. Praying that everybody gets some wisdom like immediately, immediately. We don't have much time. And, and we really need some wisdom. So, um, and then getting your wisdom, have understanding, get some understanding. So where I'm going with this is that um, to navigate this life, to discern these days, we, we need to have God's wisdom. We need to have his discernment. We need to have his, we need to have understanding, right? And, and we need experience at that. We need practice at that. And so it goes back to your daily personal relationship with God, right? Just take one week out of your life. If you're not already doing this, just take one week and say, I'm going to hang out with you, God, as much as I can. Let's spend as much time together as we can. And just ask him every day for wisdom. You can start right here in the book of Proverbs. If you don't know where to start reading in the Bible, go to Proverbs. There's Go to chapter 11. Okay? And, and just that one chapter... You will get there how many there's thirty one verses in this thing. They're all one sentence long. Just read chapter eleven of Proverbs. And you talk about having some wisdom. If if you read just this if you study just this one chapter and you pray and you ask God for wisdom and you pray and ask for God for the Holy Spirit and you pray and ask for God to to really give you some oomph. In your in your wisdom and your power and your strength, just read that one one chapter for a week. Hang out with God and pray about it. And I'm telling you, I mean you you're gonna you're gonna, I mean you're gonna have some bulk at the end of one week on on the wisdom thing, the discernment thing. Like you like unbelievable what this will do just this one chapter will do for you in just one week you hear about all these weight loss problems yeah you can just drink ice water and you get skinny <laughs> yeah i guess if you did just drink ice water you would get skinny it's no lie how long does it take for you to weather down to nothing right that's what I, that's the diet i need to be on <laughs> but i mean so um i'm gonna i'm gonna hurry up man this is going a little bit long sorry guys and ladies i'm gonna go back over here um i'm gonna go back over to the book of james and i want to read uh chapter it's one five if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of god who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him i mean god is saying Literally, I will just give you this. Literally, just, I'm just going to give it to you liberally, with without reproach. It will be given to him. James one five. So this is a freebie. God's just like here, take this. It's like us giving out Bibles at the coffee and prayer. And I'm looking at the weather for tomorrow. I'm. I'm I don't know if this is going to be the weekend, but maybe next. I'm, I'm going to see. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberty or all liberally and without reproach. And I'll be honest, and, and I'm sorry I'm going long, but I remember so many times 
please God, give me the money to pay my rent. Please God, give me a job. Please God, give me this, this, or that. And you know what I should have been praying for? Please God, give me wisdom. Please God, give me knowledge. Please God, give me discernment. Please God. And you know what? And he knows our needs. He knows what we got to have, right? And you, it's good to pray for that stuff. Trust me. I, I, and, but I don't, I don't pray for money anymore. I don't pray for, Lord, you know my needs and I trust you to provide what you, you've said that I'll have what I need when I need it. And he's been faithful and does that. I'm not rich. We don't have a whole crap load of money. But I'm praying for wisdom and discernment and how to proceed and how to, then he'll, he'll give you how to utilize. We talked about the stuff that's right here in your grasp in our first prayer. What can you control? What do you have at your disposal? Ask God to give you wisdom and, and discernment on how to best utilize that stuff, right? If you're missing this or missing that or not enough of this or not enough of that, load up on discernment, load up on wisdom. How do you get this? Spending time with God, praying, hanging out with him. Um, I love praise and worship music. I really like, man, I'm so pumped when I get done listening to praise and worship. He loves it. When we praise him. We worship it. Worship him. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just, it's an accident. Um, he loves it. And I love doing it. And it, because... I'm, I'm having that personal relationship with him. I feel it's like I, I'm loving on my wife. Why wouldn't I want to praise her? And, and why wouldn't I want to let her know that I'm not worshiping her, but, um, you know, I felt like getting down on my knees and kissing her feet. I really have. I like her that much. So, um, so getting there, um, reading the word, spending time with God, Hanging out with, just hanging out with them. Put some praise and worship music on. Invite God over. Let's have a party. Just, just friends coming over. Make dinner. Make dinner for God. Even though if you live by yourself. Or it's just your family. Hey, we're inviting Jesus to dinner tonight. He's going to be with us. Whatever you can to spend time with him. Whatever you can to have him. Have that personal relationship with him, right? Um, And, and... Like I was saying, the Proverbs are excellent source of wisdom. Proverbs, man, you cannot go wrong. Every time I crack the book of Proverbs open and read, it's like, man, I knew that. How come I've forgotten it? So this is a constant, everyday, daily thing. I can't just tell my wife, oh, I love you once. And then you got to keep the relationship going, right? And, and so, all right, I'm going to go ahead and quit and, uh, God bless everybody, all the people on our Facebook page and just a word that, um, I'm calling them the random stoners out there. They, they're the, and I, I don't even want to have to address this, but do not, if there's anything in the comments on our videos, Hey, meet me over at someplace else on the interweb, I get a word for you or any of that kind of, you know, do not listen to any of that. I would never, ever do anything like that. That's spammers. We had another round of it again. And if our contact information is in the, in the uh, description. And if you want to snail mail me, I didn't put a email or a phone number or anything like that. If you, if you want to send me a message, I am checking Facebook, go to our Facebook page, answer the questions, they're real simple, you know, and, and if you, if you, if you don't have a profile picture up or you have one post or you just created an anonymous account, send me a message, send me a personal message through messenger on Facebook and I will respond to you. Okay. And, and so we're having to watch that too, because I've had a couple of trolls get in there and I'm, I'm just going to have to. And I'm sorry, I just, I have to, God tells me, no, you're not in. That's simple. I, I have to guard who's, who's hanging out with us. And I'm sure everybody can appreciate that. So, all right. If you want to get a hold of us, you know how to do it. Um, 
God bless everybody. Have a, have a great day. Spend some time with God today. Talk to you later.